In this video, I will show you how you can create these metrics-like bullet trail effects with geometry nodes in Blender. It will be a really easy geometry node setup and it will be straightforward and nothing complicated. So stay tuned until the end. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so first of all, let's add in a plane. Doesn't really matter what, but just something you can apply geometry nodes to. Then go up here to the geometry node tab and then press on new. Okay, so first of all, let's disconnect the group input. So our object disappears and let's add in a cylinder. And let's connect it. Okay, so the bullet trail should be like very tall, but also very thin. And we should be able to control the length because if we want to make the bullet trail larger or just a short one where the bullet just exited the barrel. So let's first of all set the field type to none and let's do size segment 500. You can also do less if your PC starts lagging but it's just like the resolution of the mesh. Uh, mesh. And then let's to the radius, something like 0 0.005 and the depth, something like 0 0.25. So now you can already see we have this bullet trail and it's approximately the same size as a bullet. So that's why it's so small. Um, now you can also make it shorter if you want. You can go with something like 1. It's a little bit shorter. But for now, let's go with something like two or maybe two or two five okay perfect so the next thing we want to do is to subdivide it even more because we can see it's still very rough so let's add a subdivide mesh node so you can also control this you can keep it at zero for now and then turn it up later in the render but my pc can handle it with two levels so now we want to displace this mesh we want to give like a wave effect and give it bigger ripples and smaller ripples. So for that, let's add in a set position node. Okay. And let's also add in a set shade smooth node. So our geometry is a little bit smoother. Okay, perfect. Let's do something like that. So now to displace the geometry, let's move this back and we have to plug something into the offset because we want to offset the geometry. So let's add in a wave texture and then let's combine it with a math node and set it to subtract and plug it into the offset. So now it's still weird, so let's also add in a normal node. And let's add in a vector math node. Let's move this down. And let's also set this to multiply and connect the normal to it and put it in between the subtract and the set position. Okay, so now it's still a little bit crazy. And that's because we have to change the wave texture to set axis because we want the waves, the waves like on the set axis because our object is rotated that way. So now the waves are way too small and way too heavy too. You can see like our original geometry in here and it displaces it way too strong. So to fix that, let's add in a combine node, combine x, y, c, and let's add in a mix node and set it to color. Now let's plug that in here and plug the combine node down here. And now you can see with that we can control the strength. So let's put it all the way up to maybe something like 0 0.975. So another thing we will do is Let's add in a position node 
and also a vector math node connected to the wave texture. And now we can control like where the wave should be, but only like change the third value. Let's set it to zero for now because we don't need it yet. Okay. Okay, so if you see like these look more like balls and waves, just turn the mix a little bit more up to decrease the strength. Maybe let's do 0 0.99, 0 0.999 maybe. Okay, that's a little bit too less. Let's do 0 0.9975. Okay, let's keep it like that. It will change again afterwards when you add more ripples, but let's go into adding the smaller ripples. So now we have like the big ripples, but we will also want smaller ones on top. So for that, let's copy the whole setup with Shift D and move it down. Then let's copy the mix node and let's combine it and plug it into the offset. So for this mix texture, it's important to select screen. Where is it? Right here. Okay. And now let's change the wave itself. So let's turn it up. Maybe something like this. And let's also make the original waves a bit bigger. Something like that. Okay, let's make them even smaller. So let's turn it up to maybe 50. Okay, so now we are getting there. Let's make this placement a little bit less. So maybe let's do 0 0.999. Okay, and this one can go up to one. Okay, perfect. So first of all, it's way too thin. And we want like the beginning to be smaller than the end. So it should begin like a thick one. So let's take um, I have a finished one already here as reference and it's over here. So this is what we want. We want like the start to be very small and then in front of here is the bullet and the beginning has to be large. So right now, like I said, first of all, it's way too thin and we also have to make the back a little bit bigger than the front. So let's go to our original wave again. Let's move all of these nodes down and let's add in a gradient texture. Let's copy these two mix nodes. And let's plug this one into here and this one into here. And this two into the offset. Okay, so now it's not right, not yet. For that, we have to add a few more nodes. So first of all, let's connect the gradient texture to a color ramp. Okay, that was just a really, really loud thunder. Okay, <laughs> but let's continue. So let's plug the color ramp into a subtract node and copy it again down from down here. And the subtract node into a multiply, like the same setup essentially, but with a gradient texture instead of a wave texture. Let's also copy the normal. And let's plug the multiply into the top and just combine XYZ into the bottom. Okay, so now we are back on track in the middle. So now let's change this to spherical and let's add in two more vector math nodes. You can copy them again from down here, one with add and one with multiply. Let's plug them in and also a position node. Okay, so now let's go outwards a bit so we can see it better. Okay, so that we can see a little bit better what we are actually doing. Let's turn it up again with the mix node uh, with the combined X, Y, and C. We can like control the strengths. So now you 
you can see the gradient texture really well. So now the gradient texture is too short because we want this to be at the top and this at the bottom. So let's multiply it with something like 0 0.3. Okay, so this is way better. Maybe 0 0.4. Okay, perfect. But now we also want this to be right down here and not in the middle. So let's change the add on the set axis again. So we are down here. And now we have to turn the multiply down again. Maybe 0 0.2. That's the 1.2. Okay, perfect. So now let's dial everything in so it looks good again. So let's turn this up because we don't want it that much. Maybe something like 0 0.9, 0 0.975. Let's make a little bit more, Maybe 0 0.8. Okay, so let's set it to 0 0.9. I think that looks fine. So now the ripples are too weak. So make, let's make them a little bit stronger. So let's do 0 0.975 also down here. Okay, and now they're also too big, so maybe let's do something like 10. So now they're a little bit too much of the displacement. So let's turn this one down, maybe to 0 0.5. And yes, this starts to look pretty good. So now with this color ramp, we can also control like, like fine tune the gradient, where the gradient texture should be. You can also make the end a little bit thicker. If you pull down this one, so yeah, with that, you can just like control it. And now if you go in, you can also see the difference with the subdivision. If you turn this down, you can see. And if you turn off shade smooth, you can really see the difference. So yeah, you can turn up even higher. But I think for most shots, this will work out perfectly. Maybe even one is enough. Because if you turn on shade smooth again, this looks pretty good. Now we can also fine tune it. Um, if we like want to change the beginning so that it's maybe more close so it connects perfectly to the bullet you can change like these add sliders to shift around the waves but yeah besides that that's the finished node system so here it is again in its full form so now we get to the second important part and that's the shading and um, that's really easy to do so but first of all we need to add in a set material node right at the front then go down here to the material tab add a new material let's call it bullet trail and now we have to also select it this one perfect so yes, this is the finished node tree for the geometry nodes. Again, you can play around with all of these values. Nothing of this is like, has to be exactly like this. These are just the settings I prefer, but you can play it around maybe if you want a different style of bullet trail. And yes, let's go to the material. So let's change to the shading space. Okay, so we're now in the shading space. So for now, let's... Um, stay in the material preview mode. Let's close this one. We don't need this and this one neither. Okay, so let's delete the principle. Again, it's a pretty easy setup. So let's just add in a transparent node and a refraction BSDF. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on install, you can just hold Control Shift and right click. So it creates a mixed shader node, or you can also edit in like this, mix shader. And now for the material, we want the trail to fade out into transparency back here. So let's add in again a gradient texture and let's press Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on to add a mapping and texture coordinate node. But you can also add it in manually. And let's add in a color ramp node like that. 
Let's connect it and plug it into the factor node. Okay, so now in the material preview node, um, the transparent is just black. So don't worry about that. It will look good in cycles. And if you want to render out it out in Eevee, make sure in the material settings to activate alpha blends so it is transparent. Well, let's go back to cycles. So let's turn this up again. Doesn't really matter because we'll plug in this one into here. And now you can see how it gets transparent from the side. So we just have to flip like the whole gradient texture 90 degrees. So let's flip it on the Y axis, put in 90 degrees. And now you can see how we can control it with the color ramp. And that looks pretty nice. And for the IQR, for that, let's go into cycles to fine tune it. And I just have a easy background here so we can see a little bit better what we are doing. So by the way, you can now just move this bullet trail around, rotate it. Yes, so let's put it against a wall or something because it's a transparent material. You want to see what we are doing. Okay, so now we can see really good how it fades in from here. Then it gets stronger. By the way, if you don't want it that strong up here, you want it also more transparent, you can just click the white pin here and bring it down like that. So maybe let's put it something like 0 0.9. Okay, perfect. Now let's change the IQR to something like 0 0.1. So we can see what that did. So right now it's a little bit more see-through than before. Like this looks more like it's actually glass. And this you can also do like 1.01. And this looks more like a heat wave, like a heat ripple, if you know what I mean. I think for me it worked best at 0 0.1, but you can also go lower. And now the cool thing is with the refraction, like depending on how you look into it, it looks quite different. So the last thing to get rid of, you can see um, we have like these black edges. You can see it especially good if you're like in front of it and this looks terrible. So for that, just go into the render tab. Let's go into light path and just turn up the max bounces of the transparent to something pretty high, like 18. Now you can already see down here how it appears if you turn it back down, it disappears if you turn it back up, so that's fine. And now if you look like from the front, we still have it um, on the glass. So if you want to get completely rid of this too, just crank up the transmission also to 18 and also the total. And now we got pretty much rid of it. But it also takes a little bit longer to render, so you have to balance these. Um, but yes, that's like the basic effect, how you can do this metrics like bullet trail. And with that, we're already at the end of this video. Make sure to tag me on Instagram if you create something with this tutorial. I would love to see it and maybe I can repost it to my story. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you liked it and dislike it if you don't. Also, let me know in the comments what I can do better or what you want to learn next. Also, check out my Patreon channel. I upload weekly exclusive stuff there, like exclusive assets or exclusive detailed tutorials. And also check out my Gumroad for project files and more assets. And yes, I hope you liked this video and I wish you all a great week and see you next time.